Well, good morning, Grapeview friends. Here we are. This past week was uh, on Thursday was Ascension Day, which is that uh, day that is noted in some Christian communities uh, as a special day of recognition of the day that Christ ascended into heaven, those days after the resurrection. And interestingly, on Thursday this week, uh, our uh, premier thought that we should have another couple of weeks in lockdown. So there's that, uh, Ascension Day on one hand, and the extension of the lockdown for a few more weeks. Well, uh, we trust and pray as we are doing uh, that the outcome of this process here now in the next few weeks will actually take us in the direction that we all hope and pray that it's taking us. Well, we began a journey six months ago at the beginning of Advent. We've taken a deep dive into the story of Jesus. We're just about at the end of this part of the cycle. This is how the, the church calendar helps us to keep rehearsing the big picture of who Jesus was and why and how he came to be Emmanuel, God with us. Present then, present today, now with us. And if we don't keep telling that story in our public gatherings, putting our focus where it needs to be, really no one else is going to do that for us. And then we move into the story of the people of God for the next number of months. What does it look like to live out our belief in Jesus as Lord in our everyday, ordinary lives? And so we're going to be having a, a couple of series, kind of my summer series that help us to take a deep dive into uh, different aspects of our Christian life. And uh, we get to that space there after Pentecost Sunday, which is coming up next week. So stay tuned for some, uh, something a little bit different for Pentecost Sunday next week. We've been spending time in Easter tide over these last weeks, reflecting on how the resurrection changed everything. In the Jesus story, this is the time when he spent several weeks, mostly alone with his disciples, teaching them. And over these past weeks, we have followed the story of Peter and what the resurrection meant to him in those first months after Jesus left and the Spirit came at Pentecost. Today we're going to flash back to the disciples' final days with Jesus and pick up that story in the first verses of Acts chapter 1. This is Luke, the author of the Gospel, now the author of the Acts of the Apostles. He says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles that he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them, and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. <laughs> he appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gift that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it's not for you to know the times or dates that the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside him. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking at the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. 
So it's during this time period that Jesus explains to his disciples all the stuff they couldn't understand before his death and resurrection. Matthew, John, Peter, they learn so much that helps them to teach and write in the years to come, helping make sense of everything that had happened to them. The disciples are instructed to wait for the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Why didn't they all receive the Spirit while he was still with them? That's an interesting thought. Why wait 10 days after the ascension? <laughs> Hmm, maybe we need to learn to wait sometimes. And then don't worry about dates and times. The important thing is that you'll be my witnesses. And then finally the angels, Whoa, why are you standing around? Let's get on with things. Jesus will return when he's ready. So God came, took on human form so that he could take up residence amongst us. Jesus lived a life on earth in constant conversation with the Father and the Spirit, was crucified, died, was resurrected in a glorified body, a body that seems to be suited for the physical world. He ate and the spirit world. So God created this earth, molded humans from that earth, then God takes on human flesh so as to experience the challenges that we all, his creation, face every day. God is not disconnected from the realities we face. That human spirit body of the Son is now seated with the Father. It's interesting that, in a sense, our human frailty as Jesus took on human form, has entered into the reality of the Godhead. That God somehow is immersed and connected with the creation in ways that we can't fully imagine. It's not us down here and God up there. There's much more of a connection and a crossover than we really can understand. Well, there's this song from a few decades ago. God is watching us from a distance. Well, that's not exactly the tune, but you get the idea. God is watching us from a distance. It sets up the notion that somehow God's a long way off, just watching over us, which is somewhat comforting. But it's really suggesting that God's not involved in what he's watching. He's just sitting back, hoping for better good things to happen on earth. Well, interestingly, that's the complete opposite of the record of Scripture. Let's think about the ascension for a moment. Jesus does not die and go to heaven. Jesus' living physical body, that, that body that Peter and John have touched, they've seen him eat food, that living physical body ascends into the presence of the Godhead. God is not rejecting our human bodies as sort of subpar. Rather, actually, God inhabits and glorifies our bodies, which eventually makes our bodies all that they could be. You need to read what Paul has to say about that. In essence, human flesh has now become part of who God is. That's, that's part of what this whole uh, Emmanuel story is about. So this is telling us that the very physical things of our daily lives are part of the things that salvation is for. God has redeemed our physical selves as well as our souls. Food, water, sanitation, shelter, physical touch. These are all part of the things that God came to restore. Jesus' death and resurrection, in a sense, is the first fruit of the restoration of all those things. And the disciples got to see that connection on the day of Jesus' ascension. So the next thing we realize is that Jesus 
is Lord over all. He has conquered death and now has passed into the spirit realm, into the presence of God. Caesar, the sort of earthly ruler of the day, was supposed to be viewed as one of the gods, but Caesar could not do that, physically move between the dimensions. Nor any other emperor or system of government or social hierarchy. This means that our ultimate allegiance is not to this flag or to that government, but to Christ, who is first of all, above all others. Our psalm for today uses the idea of ascension to help us think of a king moving towards his seat on his throne. If you think of seeing a video clip of Queen Elizabeth walking down the long hall toward the throne while the people clap and perhaps trumpets sound, that's the queen ascending to her throne. And our psalm helps us with that today. The disciples on that ascension day got to see that our lives are meant to be a reflection of the reign of Christ in the midst of other powers and lords who think they influence and control our world. As they stood looking up at their friend, Jesus, who has now moved into a new way of understanding for them, is now ascending to his throne and that's an image that will stick with them for the rest of their lives. Finally, the disciples begin to make the connection between the departure of Jesus and the coming of the Spirit. Before the crucifixion, Jesus had told them, I'm going to leave you and I will send an advocate who will be with you always. Now they're starting to put two and two together. Jesus has not left us. He's just present with us in a different form, but still completely immersed in our lives and in this world. God is not watching us from a distance. Jesus in this story is on his way out of the physical world, but also not. The presence of Jesus is still with us. In Jesus' prayer for his disciples in John 17, he prays to the Father, don't take them out of this world, but protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world, and yet they are. Just as I am not of this world, and yet I am. In the same way that you sent me, as part of that spiritual kingdom of heaven, you sent me to bring that kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. So our true home is in the kingdom of God. And that kingdom of God transcends the physical and the spiritual categories that we think of. And we are ambassadors of that kingdom. The king is on his throne. And we are sent out to set up little embassies here in neighborhoods all around the world, from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. That's the assignment Jesus has given to his disciples here. Jesus did not come to conquer the world for God or to set up a Christian nation or empire, but to lovingly draw everything that God has created into this Jesus kind of kingdom that was emerging. Jesus said, this kingdom is not like the kingdoms of this world. And that's the kingdom that Jesus is drawing people into. Well, I think the disciples were wondering these kinds of things. If God's kingdom is coming on earth and we have access to all the resources of God through the Holy Spirit, what kind of kingdom people should we be? If all this is true, what kind of people should we be? And, wow, how do we tell the story of all that God wants to do? 
I think those were the questions that the disciples were pondering as they sat waiting for the gift of the Holy Spirit. As the disciples stood side by side that day, gazing up into the heavens, they were becoming a kingdom people focused on Jesus. It's an interesting image, isn't it? Rooted with their feet on the ground, but looking to Jesus. And in the days and months and years to come, those witnesses to the resurrection and now to the ascension, they would speak of the reality of the truth of their experience. These things are true. This Jesus of Nazareth is God's Messiah, living, dying, resurrecting, and now ascending. Well, I'm sure there were days when those disciples wondered if they were crazy. I'm sure people listening to their story about a resurrected dead man who is God come to earth thought they were crazy. And so they did have to continually tell that story to one another. And then, of course, eventually to strangers and people of other lands who didn't have the kind of Old Testament backstory. As these witnesses, the disciples, got older and the years passed by, they realized that they needed to write these stories down to pass from one generation to the next so that the story would not be forgotten. And that's what this book is that we have. True stories of people who experience realities saying, would you consider what we have found to be true? And so here we are, 2,000 years later, telling this story again. I'm sure there are days when each of us wonders, <laughs> really? I'm telling my kids, my neighbors, that I believe in a man who lived and died and then was resurrected and then disappeared into a cloud. That's what I'm telling. And that I organize my life as if this Jesus is my King and Lord? I'm sure some of us wonder, okay, even if there is a God, he must be off in the distance someplace, just looking on, not very involved. So really, I guess I can just go about things in whatever way I see fit, right? After all, where is God right now in this pandemic stuff? Well, and that's why I'm thankful that we have the written record of these people who captured the activity of God at work in the world and have faithfully passed it on to us. The only story that we have of Jesus, that we have of the God who sent Jesus, is here in this book. There is, there is no way to meet Jesus separate from our understanding of who he is in this text. Is there a truth that stands out? Is there a truth that stands the test of time? That makes sense of the world around us? And have I found this story of God who chose to become human? Has it touched my life? Have I found it to be true in my experience? Does this story help me make sense of this messed up world? Does this Holy Spirit really fill and guide my life? And my answer is yes. I have found these things to be true. I have found the Holy Spirit to be doing things in my life that I can't put down to any other source. And that is good news. That's the story that we have to tell to our children, to our neighbors, in just the same way that Jesus asked his disciples that day, will you be witnesses of what you have seen and heard for yourselves? That's all I'm asking. And the Holy Spirit will help you with that. So wait a few days and you'll see what I mean. That's our engagement with the Word of God this week. A story that's beyond comprehension of a human being resurrected from the dead, 
somehow disappearing into a spirit realm that we can't comprehend. And then in a few days, the Holy Spirit comes and does stuff again that's beyond comprehension. And that's the challenge of the story that we have, that we believe as Christians. And it makes a difference how we understand that story. Has this Jesus done something in our lives that is unexplainable except that there's a living God at work in the world? So we'll continue to tell this story. That's why we gather. And so the Lord be with you these days, friends. As sometimes it seems like uh, God may be off in the distance. And yet the record of scripture is that he's right there just beside us. Take care, friends. Have a good week.